Welcome back to MG Marine Tech and today we are going to be covering Garmin's Marine Network. If you have multiple devices I'm going to show you how to physically uh, network these units as well as what you can accomplish once they are networked. Today's video is mainly going to be covering the Ecomap series units so your Ecomaps and your Ecomap Ultras. I will touch base a little bit on the GPS maps uh, which I'm sure can share some of this info but it will mainly be covering the Ecomap units. So. If you haven't already, please subscribe and stay tuned. Thanks. First, we have to cover what units can actually be networked. And that means that the, both units have to be in the same family or series. So an Ecomap can be networked to another Ecomap and a GPS map can be networked to another GPS map. You cannot network a GPS map to a Ecomap. To further clarify which units can actually be networked, I'm gonna provide a link down below um, click on that link and it will walk you through what units can actually be networked together. If you have any questions, please go there. It will also give you charts of what can be shared between those units. The second and obvious requirement for your unit to be networked is it has to have a network port or some of them are labeled as Panoptics port. I'll show you a close up of what those actually look like, but you're going to have to have that port to add your unit to the network. Let's cover the physical connection of your network and how to do it. It is super, super simple. You need a Garmin network cable or a Cat5 cable. This is your standard ethernet cable. Uh, this is the Garmin waterproof cable. As you can see, it's much more robust and it is definitely preferred over a standard Cat5 cable. Either one can be used. This is not waterproof and not recommended for long-term use. In a pinch, it will get you by. Um, all you do to hook these up is plug them in. Kind of hard to do one-handed, but you plug them in, screw it down. That is sealed up, waterproof, ready to go. And then on the other end, you simply plug it into your other unit. It's as simple as that. So now that you have your units actually physically networked together, what can you accomplish? Well, you can share your maps, your waypoints, your transducers, your user data. You can even share transducers that are UHD to units that are not UHD, as well as panoptics and live scope. You'll be able to see any of this on any of the screens that are actually on the network. So let's hop out on the water and I'll give you a few examples. All right guys, we're out here on the water now and I wanted to show you what can actually be accomplished when you have your units networked. I've got a 126 Ultra here and then a regular 93 SV Plus as well as another 93 SV Plus up at the front. So this is a non-UHD unit. This is a UHD unit and you can see we are running a GT54 UHD transducer. Um, but what I wanted to cover first are waypoints and it, how it can share waypoints. As you can see this section of the river that we are on, I do not have a waypoint right here. So. Uh, say I wanted to create a quick waypoint, um, hit my mark button, I created 234 and I can hit back. Now I can go over to my, my mapping unit and you can actually see that, that that waypoint was just created, 234 right there. One of the really cool things once you are networked is being able to share any connected transducer. So I have a GT54. UHD transducer connected to my uh, Ecomap Ultra 126SV here. This 93 Plus has no transducer connected and that 93 Plus has a CV52 on the trolling motor. So I, I can actually access any transducer from any screen on my setup right now. So say I wanted to go over here and I wanted to look at the CV52 transducer that's on my trolling motor. As you can see right now, it's reading off of my GT54 that's in the back. To select those different sonars, again, go to your menu key, sonar setup, and then your source. I click my Ecobat 93 Plus, and then I can go back to my sonar screen. And now as you can see, new sonar is loading and it is reading off of the CV52 from the 93 plus up front. And this works on all the screens. So say I wanted my down view to be re reading off of the CV52 up front. I can same thing, click on this one, hit my menu button, go into sonar setup, hit source, and click my 93 plus. 
hit back, hit back. And as you can see, new, so new sonar readings are being loaded from my CV-52. So this unit is actually reading off of the front transducer right now. And that trick will work on any of these screens. So you can really pick and choose which ones you want to read where. Now let's cover some more complex networks involving other components such as panoptics or multiple screens where a GMS-10 networking hub may or may not be required and show you how you can put that money that would, would be for a GMS-10 network hub towards a upgrade to a screen and not have to use the network hub and you'll end up with a better overall combo. The units that we're going to be using in the following examples are the Garmin Ecomap 7 and 9 inch units, uh, both UHD and non-UHD. These units have one networking port, which is highlighted here on the right, and we'll also be using the Garmin Ecomap Ultra 10 and 12 inch units. These have two networking ports, which comes in very handy. All right, the first example I wanna cover is of three screens and a couple of transducers. As you can see, we have two UHD units, one being a 73 that's on the bow, and then another being a 93 UHD, which is on the console. The other console unit we have in this example is a 93 SV+, Plus, which is a non-UHD unit. The two transducers that we have are a GT54 mounted on the trolling motor and a GT56 mounted on the transom. As you can see, both of these transducers are connected to UHD units. That is very important because they are UHD transducers. They have to be connected to a UHD unit. To network all of these units together, it is going to require a GMS-10 networking hub because each of these units has only one networking port. So to connect them all together, we're gonna to need more networking ports, hence the GSM-10 network expander. That has five ports, and in this example, we have two open ports remaining, meaning we could add live scope down the line or another screen or unit. In this example, we'll be able to share any of the connected transducers across the board, meaning the GT56 can be shared to the 93 plus or the 73 plus, as well as the GT54 can be shared to the 93 plus or the 93 UHD. It's very important that UHD transducers are connected to UHD units so that they work properly. This second example is of two 93 UHDs and a live scope system. Both the 93 UHDs have one port, so to network everything together, we are also going to require a GMS-10. This way, we'll be able to share live scope on both screens, as well as the connected GT56 transducer. This third example is extremely similar to the second example. We have two screens and a panoptics live scope system. As you can see, there are a couple of differences though. One is that we have no GMS-10 networking hub, and the second is that the second screen is an Ultra 126 as opposed to a 93 UHD. This is where being a smart shopper comes in handy a little bit, where we can take that money that we would spend on a GMS-10, spend it on the upgraded 126 Ultra unit, and still keep everything networked together and happy. In this example, we'll still be able to share live scope on either of the screens and any of the connected transducers, as well as your mapping, waypoints, etc. All right, guys, that was the basics of Garmin's Marine Network. If you have any questions, check out the links below or write me a comment. I'll do my best to answer those questions for you. If you guys are looking for other units to add to your network or devices to create your network, whether it be cables, a GMS-10, anything like that, anything Garmin related, check out Hennessy Outdoor Electronics. Those guys over there are super knowledgeable. They've got great pricing, fast shipping, and should be able to point you in the right direction for anything that you may need. Um, and if you haven't already, please subscribe and check out my other videos for more Garmin related tips.